Oh, hello, wonderful people. Good morning and welcome to today's stream. So, yes, well, last stream, which was yesterday, um, we went through some of the basics of Redux and I got a good understanding of um, some of the basic flows, kind of what I knew already, but uh, seeing it and actually implementing it um, was actually very helpful. So, today I figured we can continue that train and um, continue down the path of the advanced tutorial. Keep learning. I'd like to know how HTTP calls work within uh, Redux. So how did they update the store? What's best practices? Um, how do I uh, get the data in there and not... So for example, if the data is already in the store, how does it get updated if there's any new data on the server, you know? Uh, those are some questions I have, just in general. I would assume it's maybe like a push down, but um, who knows. Well, I, I don't think we'll get these answered in, in the advanced tutorial, but at least we'll see how um, HTTP calls go out and uh, we get answers that way. All right, so I'll recap a little bit from the last stream. We made a couple different files to specifically um, in the app.js, uh, which is the main React project uh, file. But the we made a couple actions that were just static strings for add, toggle, and set visibility filter. Um, we added some more just constant strings for, for the types of visibility uh, filters. And then we added some um, creators. So the creators were supposed to be uh, for creating the data type that assigns that static string of add to do, which is the type um, to the data that's passed in. So they're just functions that return an object. The reducers are where the magic is. And these are uh, basically switch case statements that modify the Redux store um, based on what action you sent it. So for example, if you add, sent the add to do uh, type, it would take, deconstruct the state as it is now and then modify uh, and then add a new object to it. So text, text action and then uh, the completed false. Same with toggle to do, it lo loops through all the existing state, reconstructs some uh, the objects from scratch. So that's very important. Um, making your data immutable or making a deep copy of it as opposed to like a shallow copy and then modifying the properties that you would want to and then the combined reducers we learn uh, takes those those functions and combines them together um, it's just a native uh, component of the redux library so that that's what that way you can organize your reducers a little bit more reducers again are a function that would take the current state in the action that you're trying to perform and then make a new copy of the state and return that to you based on what the action uh, you performed is. So if it was add, it would add a new one and then give you a new copy of the state. Um, and then again, to use them, we just inject our store uh, from Redux uh, and then we get the current state of the store. Oh, we, well, sorry, we have to also create store based on what our reducers are. So we use this create store, create our variable, and then we can dispatch actions to it. So we can dispatch the to do action, which is the, um, the creator that we made earlier. Okay, so now that we kind of recap that a little bit, let's jump into the advanced tutorial. So uh, start with async actions then. In the basic guide, we will build a simple to do app uh, it, oh, in the basic guide, we built a simple to-do application. It was fully synchronous. Every time an action was dispatched, the state was updated immediately. In this guide, we will build very different, a, a different asynchronous application. We will use Reddit API to show a current headline of the selected subreddit. How does asynchronously, a, async, synchrono, asynchronous, Asynchronously, I can't even say the word, async fit into the Redux flow. 
Um, when you call an asynchronous API, there are two crucial moments in time. The moment you start the call and the moment when you receive the answer or a timeout. Each of these two moments usually require a change in the application state. To do that, you would need to dispatch normal actions that will process, be processed by reducers synchronously. Usually for the API request, you'll want to dispatch at least three kinds of actions. An action informing the reducers that the request began. Um, the reducers may handle this action by toggling an is fetching flag in the state. This way the UI knows it's time to show a spinner. Okay, an action informing the reducers that the request finished successfully. Reducers may handle this action by merging the new data into the state they manage and resetting its is fetching. Um, the UI would hide the spinner and display the fetch data. An action informing the reducers that the request failed. The, re the reducers may handle this action by resetting the is fetching. Additionally, some reducers may want to store the error message so that the UI can display it. You may dedicate status fields to your actions. Okay, so to summarize that, whenever you make your HTTP call out, you want to modify, whenever you do the, the app in, initially, you want to modify that, make a property called is fetching and set that equal to true. If, uh, if you haven't returned an error or a uh, success back, as soon as the success or the error comes back from the HT or the timeout or the error, whatever happened, comes back from the HTTP call or the network call, um, you, then you'll set it back. So that makes a lot of sense. You may use a dedicated status field in your actions. Uh, status error, error. The error is oops and status success and the response is object. Uh, or you can define separate types for them. So, oh, so the type could be fetch post. Um, or you could do fetch post request, fetch post failure, and fetch post success. Um, kind of like the second option better, but I could be swayed either way. Just because um, having separated, isolated types uh, sounds a lot better than, than having the same type for dual purposed actions. Choosing whether to use a single action type with flags or multiple action types is up to you. It's a convention you need to dedicate or decide with your team. Multiple types leave less room for mistake, but this is not the issue if uh, this is not an issue if you generate action create action creators and reducers with a helper library like Redux Action. Whatever convention you use, stick it through, stick with it throughout the application. We'll use separate uh, types in this tutorial. Synchronous action creators. Let's handle. Let's start by defining a several synchronous action types and an action creator we need in our example app. Here we use the user can select a subreddit to display. Uh, okay, and they can also use the refresh button to update it. Uh, so hold up. Let me go down a little bit further. And do they have the source down here? Um, they do have the source at the bottom. Um, so I'm just wondering whether we should type this out as we go. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and type it out as we go. Do actions. So here we want to make a new constant for select subreddit. We'll add that up to the top there and then a new uh, creator for that uh, subreddit task okay uh, they can also press the refresh button to update it so invalid subreddit and then the creator for the invalidate subreddit okay uh, these were actions governed by the user interaction. We will also have another kind of action governed by the network request. We will see how to dispatch them later, but for now, we just want to define them. When it's time to fetch posts for some subreddit, we will dispatch request post action. Okay. So then we'll add a third one. I'm going to follow the tutorials 
practice um, instead of what uh, I was saying above. I don't I don't want to get too diverged from that. Even though I like this strategy better, I think I'm going to follow the tutorial, which I think is the first one. So, no big deal. All right. So, request post. Okay, so it is important for it to be separate from select subreddit and or invalidate subreddit. While this may occur one after another, as the app grows more complex, you might want to fetch some data with data independently of the user actions. For example, to prefetch the most popular subreddits, or to refresh stale data once in a while, you may want to fetch in response to a route change. So it's not wise to couple fetching in some particular UI early event early on. Okay, so they kind of answer one of my questions that I had earlier in that article, or at least they hint at it. Um, so my, one of my questions was with the Redux store is if you make if you make your network call out, which gets your data. Next time you make the call, you're just going to get the data from the store. You're not going to get live data from the server. So that data is essentially stale if someone has updated on something on the server. But I guess that's kind of the nature of the beast with, <coughs> with Redux and managing your state within the app. But they kind of hinted at it where you, they periodically refresh stale data. Um, so I don't know if they're going to show us how they do that. I guess they're going to set maybe... A, I don't know if they would set a timeout or something, but for an interval, that doesn't seem good to me. But I guess we'll we'll keep reading and see if they say anything about it. Finally, when the network request comes through, we would dispatch receive posts. Okay. So let's see. Oh wait. Didn't I write that one? Oh, request and receive. Gotcha. I did request. And then we'll create the creator for the receive post as well. Okay, so what is it doing though? So this is just getting the data. Receive post. Oh, we'll send it off. Okay. okay. And then we're sending the object in as opposed to doing this in the reducer. Nice. Okay. So uh, this is all we need to know for now. In particular, the particular mechanism to dispatch these actions together with network requests will be discussed later. Um, designing the state shape. Hang on. Just like in the basic tutorial, you need to design the shape of your application state before rushing into the implementation. With asynchronous code, there is more state to take care of, so we'll think we'll need to think through think it through. This part is often confusing to beginners because it's not immediately clear what information describes the state of a asynchronous application and how to organize it into a single tree. We'll start with the most important uh, use case. Oh, sorry. We'll start with the most important or most common use cases, lists, use case, list. Web applications often show a list of things. For example, a list of a post or a list of friends, you'll need to figure out what sorts of list your app can show. Uh, you want to store them separately in the state because this way you can cache them and only fetch again if necessary. Here's the state shape of our Reddit headlines app might look like. So selected subreddit front or front end posts by subreddit front end is fetching did invalidate and then items react jada js fetching did invalidate last updated items okay oh okay so each of these is the the selected subreddit and then each one of those contains its items within it okay so that makes sense so give me one second. I have to, I'll be right back. About that, so I apologize. All right, I'm back. Um, a drink. All right. 
So selected subreddit front end. This is just an example flow. Um, oh, mad. We'll get doggo. Kill puppy. All right. Better angle. I know you're here for the dog, anyways. All right. So here are a few uh, important. There are a few important bits here. We store each subreddit's information separately so that we can cache every subreddit. Then the user switches between them. Then the second time, the update should be instant, and we won't need to refetch. Unless we want to do, unless we want to, um, don't worry about all these items being in memory unless you're dealing with tens of thousands of items and your user rarely closes a tab. You won't need to any sort of cleanup. For every list of items you will want to store is fetching to show a spinner, did invalidate so that you can later toggle it when the data is stale. Um, and last updated so you know when the when it was fetched the last time in the items themselves. In the real app, you will want to store pagination state like fetched page count in next page URL. Wow. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Don't do that. Um... So in this example, we store the received items together with the pagination informative or information. However, this approach won't work well if you have nested entities re referencing each other or if you let the user edit items. Imagine the user wants to edit a fetch post, but the post is duplicated in several places in the state tree. This would be really painful to implement if you have nested entities or if you're, you let users edit received entities you you should keep them separate in the state as if they were as if it was a database in pagination information you would only refer to them at, by their IDs uh, this lets you always keep them up to date the real world example shows this approach together with normalizer you normalize the nested API responses with this approach your state may look like this so selected subreddits front end Entities, users, posts, and then the IDs of the post. And yeah, okay. Um, and then the front end, oh, would have references to those entities. This, this is, I think, this makes more sense to me coming from, like just from a database standpoint or from a data integrity standpoint. Uh, being able to retrieve them based on their ID uh, of what was up above is great. And that way we can modify them into here. So we have, an, I like the, the naming convention entities too. So you can have like a category of entities. And then from here you can group them based on like network request calls. Um, <laughs> and retrieve the data that way. But I do like that. Okay, so in this guy we won't normalize entities but it's something you should consider for more dynamic applications. Okay. Agreed. Um, handling actions. Before we get into details of dispatching actions together with network requests, we will write the reducers for the actions we defined above. Note on reducer composition. Here we assume that you understand reducer composition with combined reducers as described in the splitting reducer section in the basic guide. If you don't, please read it. Yeah, we did. So reducers JS. So... We have, oh, so we'll go to the reducer, reducers JS now. So in here we have the visibility filters and the to-do toggles. So in this one, we'll now have a selected subreddit um, reducer that will com <laughs> combine into the later one. Oh, and we'll have a post reducer, but we'll have a couple different reducers. So a, we just added the selected subreddit and the posts. And these, we also need to pull these in. So 
There we go. Okay, and then in here, also going to take the post by subreddit. Oh, so this is the network call out. We're going to post that in there. Okay, so this would be just to review this real quick. Let's see. So select the subreddit. Reddit um, would be. Oh, so it just basically returns the selected subreddit. So why? Why doesn't it set the state? Action.subreddit. Okay. Let me not read too much into that one. But I think I feel like this should have assigned the state dot subreddit. Selected subreddit to that and then return that. Action dot subreddit. That doesn't make sense to me because this isn't returning the state. This is just returning the subreddit. It's not returning the state. Shouldn't it have modified a new state, a new copy of the state and return that, not the subreddit? But okay, I'll just ignore it and keep reading. Um so the posts they're initializing to a new object, um, and when this comes in, they're can, again constructing a new state, and then modifying the did invalidate the true if it was an invalid subreddit, uh, and then the request post action will set the is fetching to true, and set the did invalidate to false, and then the receive posts will set both equal to false when it succeeds and set the items equal to the actual post and the last updated to, re to the action dot received at. Okay, and then the post by subreddit cascades all of those and assigns the root state um, and takes the action type of the subreddit and assigns it equal to all of that. So it constructs a new property for the, the root object based on what subreddit was selected and then puts the post in there. So again, this isn't normalized. So if it was normalized, we would have probably deconstructed these and put them into uh, a different hierarchy in the structure as opposed to just in items. It would have went, the IDs would have went into items and then we would have constructed them in the entities under posts, for example. Okay, so the combined reducers, we're also just going to take these two, put them in there. Um, <laughs> and then put a comma down at the bottom. Okay, so in this code, there are two interesting parts. We use ES6 imputed property syntax so we can update state action subreddit with object assign in a concise way. Okay, so I guess I guess it kind of makes sense if we're, remember how I was saying this is just returning the subreddit? I guess where are we, where are we calling this? Selected subreddit. Oh, well. Well, that doesn't make any sense still then. Never mind. Um, the object assigned state uh, action subreddit post. So this is, again, what we talked about earlier, is equivalent to next state, making a new object, next state at <laughs> action.subreddit equals post, and then object.assign this.next state. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can get pretty understand that. Okay, so we extracted post state action that manages the state of a specific post list. This is just the reducer composition. It's our choice how to split the reducer into smaller reducers. And in this case, we're delegating update up delegating updating items inside the object to a post reducer. The real world example example goes even further, showing how to create a reducer factory for parametized pagination reducers. Remember that reducers are just functions. So you can use functional composition and higher order functions as much as you feel comfortable. Um, async action creators. Finally, will we, how do we use asynchronous or synchronous action creators we defined earlier together with network requests? Standard way to do it with Redux is to use Redux thunk middleware. Okay, so I've actually used thunk in some, of, some real world projects and well, that makes sense. I thought it was a naming convention. Um, 
this company came up with, but apparently not. Um, I, I'm not going to, I kind of want to read it, but I'm not going to read it. I'm going to continue forward. It comes in a separate package called Redux Dunk. We'll explain how middleware works in general later. For now, there, are just, there is just one important thing to, you need to know. By using a specific middleware, an action creator can return a function instead of an action object. This way, the action creator becomes a thunk. Um, when an action creator returns a function, fun that function will get executed by Redux thunk middleware. This function does not need to be pure. It is just it is thus allowed to have side effects, including ex executing asynchronous API calls. The function can also dispatch actions like a those synchronous actions we defined earlier. We can still define these special thunk actions creators inside our actions JS file. Okay. So where would thunk be? Oh, I guess we're just defining it in here. So import fetch cross fetch. I don't know what that is. The probably an HTTP client that I've never heard of. Um, request post. Request post. We have those. Oh wait, sorry. Whoops. This is in in the actions. Um, let's do this import statement again. Hey, one second. Oh man, I had to sneeze. Oh my god. Ooh. All right. Request and receive posts. We have those and then invalidate subreddit. I think we have that as well. Yes, we do. All right, and then fetch posts. We don't have that currently. So, <laughs> these are our action create or these are our creators. Also, why is this one export and these ones aren't export? Whatever. Um, so I'm going to copy the notes too. But this would be our first thunk. And I feel like we should use like a thunk file. But, okay. <coughs> so fetch post subreddit. So it will return a function with the dispatch parameter. It will return, yeah, it will return the function. Um, and in that function, the dispatch will call request post. Oh, that's why it's not an export, because we're using it internally. Good thing I didn't make a separate file for it. Um, so we'll dispatch request post subreddit, which is the action creator, and the dispatch is from the Redux store. And then we'll make a HTTP call out for, so I guess that's what fetch is. Um, we knew that, but reddit slash r subreddit dot json. Then we'll map the response to json and return that. If it's an error, we'll console log it. Then we'll take that json that was just returned and dispatch receive post from the subreddit or with the subreddit parameter so we'll create the we'll use the creator and use the and dispatch that action request but shouldn't this have been shouldn't this have been the error one so in, shouldn't we have called invalidated subreddit mm. shouldn't this be inv dispatch invalid subreddit We'll use the fetch API in these examples. It is a new API. It is an, a new API for making network requests and replaces XML HTTP requests for most common needs because most browsers don't yet support it natively. We suggest that you use cross fetch library. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. All right. Don't keep barking here. Uh, internally, it uses. Uh, what WG fetch polyfill 
for the client and node fetch on the server so you won't need to change API calls if you change your app to be universal. Be aware that the fetch polyfill assumes a promise polyfill and, already, and is already present. The easiest way to ensure that you have a promise polyfill to enable Babel ES6 polyfill in your entry point before any other code runs. Okay. So let's go to index.js. Sure. Probably should do this. <coughs> Whatever. Uh, I don't really understand this too much, but uh, that's a little deeper than I want to go into right now. So back to thunks in the middleware for that. So index.js thunk middleware dev logger. Okay, so we need to do this in the index.js, which, which is where we are at. Um, and then, do we care about that or can I do this? I'm gonna do this in the app.js because this is what I was using for the index.js. Since I have it actually as a React app, I don't want to. Um, mess that up too much. So I'm going to import these one by one. So thunk middleware create logger. I think I have to install all of these. So we'll see where we get to with that. So create store and from the Redux library. We want the apply middleware. So apply middleware. And then select subreddit and fetch post from the actions. Here we go, we'll take these two. And then the root reducers, which I think we already have. Yes, to do app. So we're also going to create a logger. Cool. <coughs> so create the store root reducer apply middleware. So this is just a secondary parameter of create store apparently, which is easy. All right. And then the thunk middleware lets us dispatch functions meet middleware that logs actions. Okay. So then if we do this store.dispatch, we should do get state, then log it afterwards. Okay. And then I want to um I'm actually gonna do that afterwards too because we have this subscribe um method that we're using right here. Okay, and then I think this is gonna crash because I think we need to install those frameworks in our project, but we'll see, right? Um so npm start, see what happens. Nice thing about Thunks is they can dispatch other requests. So this is the parent. Ooh, we didn't do the should, but we're not using that, are we? Fetch and select, yeah. What? Okay. Um, oh yeah, I did change my node version, but that shouldn't matter. I expect this to crash. There we go. Okay. Does Babel fault polyfill a package that I can just... You know what? Let's remove this or comment this out for now and see if it works without that. Cross fetch. There we go. Okay, so we're just, we're just gonna install those two real quick. Excuse me. 
npm install uh, cross fetch. Then we'll do, well, we'll keep going. But I think we'll, oh, we'll have to do an npm install too, just to pull it down. npm install. That way we get cross fetch. We'll take them one by one at a one at a time, so that I can explicitly see what packages they need. All right, what do you got for me now? Redux logger. You know what? I think um smart thing to do here would be to also get um what was the other one that we did? We did Redux Dunk. So I know it's gonna need that one too. So I'll install that one real quick. Sleepy puppy. All right, Redux Thunk. <laughs> and then npm install. See what happens on that. npm does not support node 10. Probably get a new version. It's definitely working with the don't. I was reading the console log messages, sorry. Um, and I definitely, so I'm using node version manager now because I wanted to do some work with, um, with some bug testing or bug fix, rather open source issue fixing. And sometimes you need to target specific uh, node versions to compile their app. So, um, that's what I'm doing. So let's see, let's see the root object. Post by subreddit is empty object. Selected subreddit is react.js. The to-dos in the visibility filter from the last example. Um, we're just duplicating logs right now, it seems like. So the action is select subreddit with a date timestamp. Previous state is post. <laughs> by subreddit, the selected subreddit uh, at action. We're just posting that. And the next state does not modify anything on the first one. So this, oh wait, it should modify something. It should modify. Yeah, wait. The selected subreddit should have modified the fetching to true. Yes, okay. Hmm. Wonder why this didn't show it. So previous state, next state. Um, regardless, does not matter. Well, it should matter. But oh well, whatever. This is the console log from external to that. This is the one that we have the observable for. Um, I think. Oh, this is the logger. Okay. Yeah, this is the logger doing that. Okay. And then this object, so JS, di so did invalidate went to false, is fetching went to true. We don't have any items yet because it did not return the promise. Then it logs the next actions, which is request for s request posts. And so the previous state, the action, request post, and the next state which is, is fetching is still true. Did invalidate is false. Why do, it, I don't think this is updated. Like the next state should reflect what, what it's doing. See like the to-dos aren't even in here, but if you go down one more, oh, this is the next action. Okay. 
Okay, so apparently this is just one behind on where I'm logging this stuff. But it did pull the data back. The did invalidate it went to false, and the is fetching went to false. The did an error. We actually got them, and then this is our parent state whenever we get back to the app. Okay. Nice. That worked beautifully. <coughs> Alright, so there are a couple more things in here. Um, so this is like cleaning everything up a little bit because fetch post is now a one-liner. Um, they took out the error because they were console logging it before. So receive post, there's not an invalid, that error I think should have dispatched a invalidate response, but that's okay. Um, so should fetch post is another action, another creator. No, this is a, what is this? This is just an evaluation function. Um, so it takes the state in the subreddit. And this state posted by subreddit, subreddit, takes all the posts, and then if it doesn't have any posts, it's ret it returns true. If it does have posts, and the post is fetching, return false, and else return the property did invalidate. Alright, so fetch posts if needed, so this would be the... The thunk or whatever for returning the dispatch gets state. All right, so this is basically checking if it should val val should fetch the post, and if it is fetch the post, otherwise just resolve the promise. These two functions. Let's see how we use these then. So what, this goes in the reducers, right? No. Where does it go into? Actions? Yeah, actions, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, whoops. So I put that nested in the fetch, which I did not mean to. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's write some more sophisticated async control flow gradually while we consume code and stay pretty much the same. So index.js. So store.dispatch fetch post if needed, then console.log state. Okay, so this way, instead of calling the fetch just directly, we're only fetching if we need it. So this way we can pull from the state or um, yeah, here we go. So fetch posts if needed, then console.log gets state. So now this way we have a little bit more. So from actions, though, we definitely want to import fetch post if needed. And that should be it. So yeah, now, well, actually, let's go ahead and bring this up in a new. I'm going to bring this up incognito, so that way we have a little bit more verbose of an object. So there you go. Nice. So it grabs it if it needs it. Now if we refresh this, should have just grabbed it from the data from the subreddit. Or from the store. Not from the actual live post. <clears throat> so let's refresh that one more time. Oh, reserve log. Here we go. So it did not, it, did it call it? Oh, it did. Huh. 
Why? Shouldn't it have had it? I'm still in the same session. Still calling the request and receive posts. Hmm. Not sure about that one. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, thunk middleware is, isn't the only way to orchestrate async functions or actions in Redux. You can use Redux Promise or Redux Promise middleware to dispatch promises instead of functions. If you can use Redux Observable, you can also use Redux Observable to dispatch observables. Um, if you can use the Redux Saga middleware or to build more complex, use Redux Saga middleware to build more complex asynchronous actions, you can use Redux Pack middleware to dispatch promise-based asynchronous function or actions. You can even write a call, custom middleware to describe your calls to the API like the real world example docs or does. Um, so connecting to the UI, dispatching async event actions is no different from dispatching synchronous actions. We won't discuss this in detail. That's fine. <clears throat> so async flow. Without middleware, Redux store only supports synchronous flow data. This is what you get by default uh, with create store. You may enhance create store with apply middleware. It is not required, but it, it lets you express asynchronous actions in a convenient way. Asynchronous middleware like Redux Thunk or Redux Promise wraps the store dispatch method and allows you, allows you to dispatch something other than actions, for example, functions or promises. Any middleware any middleware you can use, you use can then intercept anything you dispatch and it in and in turn can pass actions to the next middleware in the chain for example a promise middleware can intercept promises and dispatch a pair of begin and end actions asynchronously in response to each promise the last middleware in the chain dispatches the action and it has to be a plain object this is when the asynchronous Redux data flow takes place. Okay. Well, let me let me look at the code again to kind of dis dissect that a little bit. So it looks like we have a thunk middleware and a logger middleware. So from what I'm understanding is this is cascading order. So that thunk middleware will be applied before the dispatch ends so before the return of the dispatch comes into play so this will execute the the action afterwards the thunk middleware will execute then the logger then this if i understand that properly in the thunk middleware how are we defining the thunk middleware Dispatch fetch posts if needed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm correct in that. <laughs> so, dispatch request posts. Hmm. I don't know if I understood that. Maybe I'll keep reading a little bit. You've seen middleware in action with async actions example. If you ever use server-side libraries like Express or Koa, uh, you should probably already, I don't know what Koa is, so I'm gonna research that later. Um, if you were also probably, you were also probably already familiar with the concept of middleware. In these frameworks, middleware is some code that you can put between the framework receiving the request and the framework generating the responses. For example, Express or Koa, uh, middleware may add C cores, headers, logging, compression, and more. The best feature of middleware is that it's composable. It's composable in a chain. You can use multiple independent third-party middleware in a single prod or project. Redux middleware solves different problems than Express or Koa middleware, but in a conceptually similar way. It provides a third-party extension point between dispatching and action 
and the moment it reaches the reducer, people use Redux middleware for logging, crashing, reporting, talking to asynchronous API, routing, and more. This article is divided into an in-depth intro to help you rock the concept um, and a few practice examples to show the power of middleware. At the at very end, you may find it very helpful to switch back and forth between them as you flip between feeling bored and inspired. <clears throat> yeah, this is a long one, huh? But we'll get to, well, maybe it's a good stopping point then. Because we are five minutes away from the end. So maybe, <clears throat> maybe I stop right there. And then we start tackling this tomorrow. So it looks like the middleware, we'll, we'll definitely deep dive into the middleware, which I would like to do because I would like to have a better understanding of how to use that in this app. And we are using a middleware now, I just don't know what it's doing because if we're dispatching fetch post if needed, that's already return. oh, it's returning a function. Okay, so that's where it comes into play. So instead of returning the state, which would be captured <coughs> right here, like, oh. Well, okay, fair. So before, since we were doing it synchronously, we are just subscribed to the store and any updates to the state, we would just display. Whereas before, like if this was synchronous, we would dispatch this action and then call store.getState and then we would be able to get the current state of the app. Now with an asynchronous way, with this approach, we're gonna take the store, dispatch the fetch post if needed, and if it returns, or when it returns, we're gonna take that whatever it returned and grab the state again. So that way, we won't, this will execute. We'll keep going down this line of code, so this will be like, load other data, load other data, and the spinner icon will still be sitting on the UI. And then when this function comes back, we'll be able to take that store, assign it to the, the variables we need to show on the UI, or retrieve the data that we need to show on the UI, and then remove that spinner. Um, now what we could do is subscribe to this, this function that we are doing above here, but in doing that, we're really that's really an inefficient way to do that because that's any state that ha or any change in the state that happens throughout the whole application. I don't think we would want to do that. We wouldn't ca want to capture every state. We would want to execute data <coughs> and load the data based on, or get the state based on any changes that are updated affecting our realm of the page. So like, for example, if posts, I mean, theoretically, it shouldn't have been updated on another page anyways, but let's say um, you have post data and something else gets updated in another portion of the, the store. With that subscribe method, that observable would notify us saying, hey, that thing changed over there. You need to get the state again, which may not be valid for our scenario because if we're not using anything in that part of the store, then then we don't want to really refresh the data. We only want to refresh it after we've executed our dispatch commands, you know. Um, it could be a way. Um, observables are nice because they post things real time, which is what that subscribe is doing. So I think I'd have to research that a little bit more to see the use cases of when and if we can specify a specific region of the state instead of the entire store. Because if we can say, hey, I want to watch all of the stuff that happened in the, like in this example, in the React.js subreddit, um, which is our, our nested property in our uh, root store, or um, then that would be nice because then we would be able to notify anything in the UI by a push, like push notification, or not a notification, a push event, which is what uh, observables do. Um, they're pub sub. All right. So, summarize, we talked about thunks today, which is a middleware. Um, 
well, we talked a little bit about middleware. We talked about thunks, which is um, how to do external communications asynchronously. Um, just external calls in uh, dispatching them when we need it. And then we talked about, I think that was pretty much, oh, just async actions and async flow. So how those work and how those are used within Redux. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. I'm going to end the stream now. Um, I might be streaming a, another, or I might be having another type of string where I start doing open source projects and doing issue fixes for those. Um, I just kind of, I'm new to that realm and I'd like to get jump started and see if I can find a project that I would like to be a contributor, contributor for. Um, but if I do find one, then I will stream that and post the videos that way. But this will be up on YouTube either today or tomorrow. Other than that, have a good day, everyone.